Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. Still Friday. It's now 8.39 p.m. And this is the 12th. 12th of April, 2019. Oh, I'm sure praying we're out of here soon. There sure is a lot of... I don't know, do we call it speculation? or? I mean, the scriptures say... May 14th is supposed to be the last day of Israel's 70th year. and But I don't believe it has to necessarily be by then. But maybe it will be the seven-day warning. Because that was the day that Noah was told to get into the ark and God shut the door. And the rain came on the 21st. But, you know, we've gone through this before, so we'll just hope, because it is our blessed hope, to hope against all hope that this time this is it. But if not, we'll just keep on keeping on, won't we? All right, I want to read this, this uh, encouragement for today, because I know this has to pertain to more than one person. At one time, it pertained to me. And I hope it'll help somebody. I'm quite sure it will. All right. It is called um, Getting Real to Heal. And it's written by a Jody Harris. Um, it's not supposed to be this way devotions contest winner so I'm not exactly sure what that means apparently they had a contest that you were supposed to write something that was under the category of it's not supposed to be this way and she titled this getting real to heal that's how I see it all right the, the first scripture she uses is, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And that's James 5, 16. The Pepto-Bismol colored blanket draped my shoulders. My legs crisscrossed over my sterile hospital bed. My body racked with sobs of uncontrolled grief. Snot and tears ran down my face. Well, this is it. My ministry is over. No one will ever respect me as a leader again, I cried. Depression got the best of me and threatened to take my life. Disappointment in who I'd become was suffocating. Pastors' wives aren't supposed to go through this. In fact, Christians aren't. We're supposed to have the joy of the Lord, I naively told myself. I'd hidden my pain and played my part. Supportive spouse, nurturing mother, happy volunteer my closest friends and my husband knew but their encouragement and advice didn't help it hurt well-meaning words and scriptures made me feel worse only god could fix me but where was he i wondered Doing time in the mental hospital was humiliating. My pastor's wife image was shattered and I felt officially crazy. And that was in quotes, crazy. I spent the next two weeks alongside drug addicts, schizophrenics, and alcoholics. We were failures and outcasts by society's standards, weak, broken, and ashamed. 
No hiding here. Hospital patients can't pretend they're well. As each person shared their story of deep pain and brokenness, I watched the others come alongside with comfort and empathy, offering kind words, a touch, or silent acceptance of you're not alone and me too. No one gave advice. No one judged or critiqued. Excuse me. No one judged or critiqued wounds and bad decisions. Through our confessions, our differences melted away and our commonalities brought acceptance and healing. Of all places for God to show up, I thought, among the weak and broken, the outcasts and sinners, the same place Jesus shows up in the New Testament. I blurted out in group, you guys, this is what the church is supposed to look like. Many were not Christians. Yet this was not an odd thing to hear from the resident pastor's wife. If only Christians could feel accepted enough to confess their hurts, their sin. If only other Christians could be accepting enough to embrace those who confess. But in the church, we're afraid to admit we're broken. We think we're supposed to have it all together. But until we're willing to get real, we can't heal. What I saw as the end of my ministry was actually the beginning. And I realized we were living out the meaning of today's key verse. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. James 5.16 I left the hospital full of hope and unexpected strength, returning to my church with new resolve. While it wouldn't be easy, it would be necessary. I would confess my brokenness to my community it might be embarrassing. I might be rejected. It was definitely a risk, but somebody had to go first. And in going first, I prayed for others to find the freedom to go next. Confident that healing would follow. What the enemy meant for evil God used and continues to use for good. Okay, now I just clicked on for further reading. Let me find where I was. Oh, that was it. And then here's her little prayer. Father God, thank you that we can indeed find healing when we begin to get real with each other. Help me continue to admit my brokenness and encourage others around me to find freedom too. In Jesus' name, amen. The truth for today comes from Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases that was the NIV and she adds Isaiah 53 5 but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was on him 
and by his wounds we are healed. Isn't that lovely? And I hope that if any of you are going through anything like that, that you can always ask for prayer and talk. I mean, just know it doesn't mean you're crazy and that God is there with you and that sometimes our minds just need a little bit of help. It can be chemical. It can be situational. It can be a number. Of, it can be a combination of these things. It can actually be a side effect of another medicine you have to take. So don't be ashamed if you have to end up in a hospital getting help. It's better to get help than to suffer alone. I mean, you're not really alone. You always have Jesus. And sometimes prayer is enough. If you can praise your way through it, hallelujah. And that often helps and does the trick. But if it's something medical going on, it may not always be enough. I just wanted to let you know that, okay? Now I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection and over each and every one of you as well. And with that, I'll say bye for now. Talk to you later.